Hi, so good morning. Today we're going to discuss regression discontinuity design. So by the end of this video, the video presentation, we will be able to answer the following questions. Number one, what is regression discontinuity design? Number two, when to use the RDD? Number three, what are the requirements of this evaluation method? And then number four is how to check the validity of this particular uh, evaluation tool. And then as we go along with our presentation, we're going to take a look at a particular case entitled Evaluating the Impact of HISP or the Health Insurance Subsidy Program of a Certain Government Using Regression Discontinuity Design. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. So by definition, regression discontinuity design or RDD is an impact evaluation method that can be used for programs that have a continuous eligibility index with a clearly defined eligibility threshold or cut score to determine who is eligible and who is not. This is according to Get Gertler 2017. So by the way, the main reference that we're going to use the particular tool is the uh, impact Evaluation in Practice by Gertler et al. 2017. Okay, so for example, in a particular case, the evaluating the impact of HISP. So hypothetically, we have these kind of values here. So these values are the poverty index, for example, of our respondents of a particular area. So Ito yung magiging poverty index 1, ng, ng respondent 1, respondent 2, so on and so forth. So, all of these values, ang tawag natin dito, yan yung tinatawag natin eligibility index. Okay? Eligibility index. So, another example of eligibility index is, for example, there is a part particular scholarship grant. Wherein, na kailangan ng grades mo na, let's say, 90, 90 pataas in order for you to to have that scholarship. So, yung grades na yon, yung grades na yon, yan yung tinatawag natin eligibility index. Okay? And then, for example, in this particular case here, they decided, based on their previous studies, that in order for them to identi identify sino yung poor, yung mas nangangailangan ng subsidy na ito, uh, they decided to have a cut-off score of 58. 58. So, ibig sabihin yun, Yung poverty index with less than 58, okay, rearrange natin. So, yung less than 58 natin dito, yung mga less than 58, yan yung magiging uh, eligible. So, sila yung mga happy. Okay? And then, the other side here, above 58, sila yung mga ineligible. So, sila yung mga malulungkot. Okay, so in this particular case, so yung 58 natin, yung 58 na yan, ang tawag natin dyan is eligibility threshold. Okay, so ito yung magiging threshold natin if they are eligible or not for the particular program. Okay, so when can we use yung regression discontinuity design? So we can use, we can assess based on the requirements, the four requirements. Number one, the index must be continuous. So, alam na natin the difference between continuous and categorical. So, the eligibility index should be continuous. Number two, the index must have a clearly defined cut-off or eligibility threshold. Hindi po pwede na maging yung 58. Pwede mong i-adjust ng 58.5, 58. So, dapat clear yung cut-off natin. Okay. Number three, the cut-off must be unique to the program of interest. Number four, the score of a particular individual or unit cannot be manipulated. Okay? That is very, very important rule here. So we also have yung tinatawag natin SHARP versus the fuzzy RDD. So SHARP, pag sinabi natin SHARP, for example, in this particular case here, yung, eto yung mga eligible natin, right? Yung mga maliligaya. So, Pagkandak mo ngayon, pagbigay mo ngayon ng mga subsidy towards that particular people, sila yung actual na makakatanggap. At kayong mga ineligible, pagdating sa distribution of the subsidy, subsidy dapat ineligible din sila. Hindi sila makakatanggap. Okay? But in some cases, meron talagang mga instances na 
For example, yung ineligible na 59, etong 59 na to, kahit alam niya na ineligible siya, hahanap siya ng paraan na magiging eligible siya. Okay? Imamanipulate niya ngayon yung data. At of course, meron naman yung kasi limited lang yung slots, yung mga eligible naman, magiging ineligible na kasi sabihin nila na naubos na yung slots. So in this particular case here, pag merong swapping na mangyayari ngayon, ang tawag na natin dyan is the fuzzy RDD. If you take a look at the graph, so, simple lang interpretation nito. Yung sharp RDD natin, itong sharp RDD, lahat, this is the participation rate, tapos dito banda yung, this is our uh, eligibility threshold. So, pag sinabi natin 58 yung eligibility threshold natin, below that threshold, dapat 100% yung participation natin. And then, above nung eligibility uh, in the uh, eligibility threshold natin, dapat zero yung participation. But in some cases, hindi yan nangyayari. For example, in this fuzzy RDD, ito yung threshold natin. Instead na 0% yung participation rate ng mga ineligible, merong certain participation. Ito yung portion na to. And because of the certain participation, dito, bababa yung uh, mga ineligible, uh, mga eligibles. So, there is yung parang nagkakaroon ng slope. So, ideally, ideally, dapat, ito yung magiging uh, graph natin. Okay, so let's take a look sa graph ng particular case natin. And then you decide if it is sharp or it's fuzzy. Okay? So, let's continue. So, when checking the validity of this tool, uh, we can take a look at the manipulation of the eligibility index. Gaya nito, yung 58 kanina, uh, ay yung 59, diba? yung eligible yung 59, yung 59 natin, ginawa niya 58 or less. Tapos yung 57, ginawa niya. So there is a manipulation in the eligibility index. So how we're going to test this one? We can graph the base poverty index. Ito yung mga poverty index natin at saka percent households. Okay? Percent households at malalaman natin na there is no manipulation if yung graph natin is continuous. There is no discontinuity. However, pag ganito na yung graph natin, yung mga eto, there is a discontinuity. Anong ibig sabihin nito? At this particular point here, let's say, this threshold na to, do marami yung mga eligible. At this particular point here, at this particular area here, do marami yung mga eligible. Anong nangyayari dyan? At yung mga ineligible, eto dan dito banta, kumukonti. So, ibig sabihin niyan, parang may nagiging transfer from this point to that point. Nagkakaroon ng discontinuity. So, we don't want that one. That is why the fourth assumption is there should be no manipulation in the data. Okay? So, let's take a look at this case and then you decide if there is manipulation or not. How about this graph here? Okay? Okay, so two years later, assuming that we already gave the subsidy to the recipients of the program, so we conducted now this uh, statistical analysis. So we have this graph here. So we have this graph. So anong ibig sabihin nito? At this portion here, we can see that there is a drop from this point Yung mga respondents natin dito, bumaba yung health expenditures nila. So, from this point to this point. Kaya nga, this arrow here is, uh, the representation of this arrow here is the estimated impact on health expenditures. So, how are we going to identify the magnitude of that impact? So, we can conduct multivariate linear regression. So, if we can, based on this result here, we have negative 9.3. The negative indicates that there is a drop in health expenditures or there is a drop in that particular variable. So, bakit siya tinawag na regression discontinuity design? So, based sa uh, uh, learnings natin from the previous statistical analysis, if we can have, if we can estimate using the simple linear regression, we can have only a one line, a one continuous line. Okay? So, in this particular case here, there, there is a gap here. There is a, 
is continuity at this portion here. So that is why it's called regression, but regression discontinuity design. Okay? So, so this is the main reference that I use in this lecture, and I will also add in the description below the additional materials at saka yung mga additional videos that you can use if you want to explore more on regression discontinuity design. Okay? So, thank you. Good luck and see you. Thank you.